welcome back. I'm at the world famous Comedy Store in London's West End. Now this place is responsible for launching the careers of some of the best known stand-up comedians in the business. One of the things I've noticed over the years is the increasing number of female stand-ups. Well, I'll be meeting a couple of them in just a moment. But first, the new kid on the block is Andy Osho, winner of this year's prestigious Funny Women Awards. Sue Ellicott went to meet her. Um, I was the joker at school. I do remember getting in trouble quite a lot. Uh, Andy Osho realised young that comedy could get her out of trouble. It was, it was that classic example of kind of using your comedy to get you out of difficult situations and just wanting to sort of entertain the people around you and make people laugh. Andy's big break came earlier this year when she was chosen as a finalist in a contest set up to give women a chance in a tough industry. Well, hello. Hello. How are we all dealing with the uh, smoking ban then? All right? Hey, yeah. Well, I don't know about where you live, but in Stratford, they are ripping the cigarette vending machines out of the schools faster than you can think, honestly. <laughs> Her secret as a stand-up is standing out. It's all about energy, performance, and writing fresh, clever material. There's loads and loads of comedy nights. It's just a case of, you know, you're not, you're not, you're not necessarily getting paid, you're getting practice. So you just go out and you just keep gigging and you just get loads of stage time. Even though I think women, generally speaking, write better material than men because they can sometimes come across as being less confident. Um, uh, maybe about themselves or about the material, that, they, that people's perception is that they're not as funny. <laughs> you are being very aggressive. <laughs> the other one's like, no, you are being aggressive. <laughs> the other one's like, no, I think you will find it is you who's the aggressive one. <laughs> the other one's like, why are you acting like a bush woman? <laughs> Woman who fries fish. You smell like fried fish. You look like fried fish. You are a cop. You are a house. You are a dog. You are a Porsche 105. You are a Porsche. That cuts you with anything. Doesn't matter what it is. You are a shoe. You are a car insurance. You are a mortgage. I think women's material is usually. I mean, this is obviously a real generalisation. But usually, I think the jokes are better crafted. They're more thought through. They're less hacked than than men's material can be. She prepares by taking notes of things she sees, conversations she overhears. It is a craft that you have to really commit to, and if you if you don't give it the time that it needs, you'll never. It, it, it won't happen for you, basically. Stand up, unlike acting, she says, is a true meritocracy. Hello, are, are you ready to order? <laughs> so if your dad is a well-known actor, it's pretty easy for him to sort of grease the wheels for you to start getting acting work. Comedy doesn't work like that at all, you just got to be funny. Lynn Parker founded the Funny Women Awards five years ago. She thinks Andy's generation gets a lot of support from male comics and that most clubs now have at least two women on every lineup. There's slightly more animosity from some longer established female comics. I'm only talking about a handful here, but you know, sometimes they haven't been as welcoming as perhaps the male comics have been because they've had their platform for a very long time. I'm going to share with you my theory about Nigerians, actually, because I think there's two types of Nigerians, OK? Men and women. <laughs> For Andy, it's not about gender, it's about making people laugh. It's that desire to just connect with people and make them laugh and do it on stage, you know, that's the ultimate um, level of appreciation, I suppose, is being able to make a, a, a room of people laugh. But the 2007 Nivea Funny Women Award winner is... Andy Osher! You are in charge of the whole thing, so if it goes right, then you get you know, the respect or accolades or whatever for it. And if it goes wrong, and it's only you that's responsible for it. Well, I'm joined now by two stars on the stand-up circuit. Sandy Toxvig, who began her career here at the Comedy Store and is a regular fixture on TV and radio. And Shazia Mercer, one of the very few Muslim female comedians in the business and recent winner of the Young Achiever of the Year Award. Ladies, thank you very much for joining me. Sandy, I... I big fan of yours and I I, I knew there was one <laughs> and I, I didn't know I, I'm more than one I assure you and um, you've been around for a long long time That's a nice start, isn't it? <laughs> That's a nice you've start. been around Sandy oh, yeah. oh, don't tell them where <laughs> got a chair what, with I was, wings. <laughs> what I was going to ask you was what was it like for female comedians back then in the sort of late 70s 80s uh, 1979 when the comedy store opened it was in a strip club 
And uh, I it was too did short. Did you work there? I did, and that's how I got the first gig. Yeah, I was uh, the only very short Danish stripper <laughs> in the entire club. Um, You've got to start somewhere, yeah, haven't you? Whatever. Um, and it, it just wasn't a job. And so it was great in a way because nobody was looking to get their television series and nobody was trying to make a huge name for themselves and win awards and stuff. There were no awards, there were no television series, there was nothing. There was just a bunch of people mucking about. Shazi, what about you? Because you're a woman and a Muslim, so that's a kind of a double-edged sword. Um, yes, um, because um, my dad didn't know about it for a long time. Oh. <laughs> and uh, What no. did he think he did? Is that like the stripping thing? <laughs> he thought I was a stripper. <laughs> No, he uh, thought I was a teacher, because I, I used to be a teacher. And, and when I started stand-up, obviously, a lot of women start stand-up, but they don't last in stand-up. So when I started, I thought, oh, well, I enjoy comedy, I'll give it a go, but I didn't know how long I'd last. And I, I, don't know, I didn't know if I was going to survive or get gigs or earn a living from it, because it's different, you know, doing one or two gigs a week than earning a living from it and giving up and being, this being your job. You said a lot of women left the comedy circuit. Why don't they last? Because, I mean, you have these competitions um, that you go for when you first start stand-up, and there's loads of women in these competitions. And then after about a year or two, you don't really see them on the circuit. Like, I don't gig with them anymore. And it's because, you know, there's loads of reasons. I mean, they don't like travelling up and down the motorway for 20 quid. Um, it's, a, it's a hard life, really, you know, driving up and down the motorway, or if you don't drive, having to sit in a car with five male comedians talking about themselves. Mm. It's quite, a, it's quite difficult, really, the and life. they're miserable. They're always oh. miserable. Never spend an evening with a male oh. comedian because I've had a terrible <laughs> life. <laughs> but there are more uh, successful female comedians, uh, it's writers, stand-up, um, actors. So is it getting better for, for female comedians? If you are specific about the sort of stuff that happens here in a place, a comedy club like the Comedy Store... Every night. Of every the night. It's a gladiatorial, bear-baiting, mm. old-fashioned, we're going to kill you unless you're... You really know, hilarious, funny. unless you're how, hilarious. How do you deal with that? So, I mean, do you develop how, a persona? How, how do you I think I, I'm, I'm actually turning into a bloke. I think that's, <laughs> that's how I deal with Is it. Is that how you Not succeed? only am I growing a moustache and a beard, but I am, I'm turning into a man. I'm quite aggressive now. When I, I'm quite feminine off stage, but when I get on stage, in order to survive, I, I just sort of uh, do what the men do. You know, I come on stage and, and I just get on with my material and just bang it out so that they don't get in and heckle me. And mm. one of the things that, uh, that men generally are able to do that women are not taught to do is they take up more space in life. They take up more space vocally. They take up more space. They sit on like this on the bus. You know, They take up more room. And women tend to allow space for other people to come in all the time. And in female conversation, there's often long pauses and that's an opportunity for somebody to come in so you're you being terribly be generous yeah. yeah you can't allow a pause you must be, you have no to be selfish yeah. you have to be a bit selfish on stage so do you not make any muslim jokes as part of your routine no. do you not trade on that at all in the beginning there was this big thing oh I, I just spoke about what I knew because that's what all comedians do in the beginning is just speak about what they know so I talked about my upbringing and stuff and made, that made a big splash but it's not I didn't do that on purpose I was just I just wanted to be a comic but I don't talk about it anymore because I'm not that religious. And there's other things I want to talk about. And I just wanted to be a comedian and make people laugh. But the great thing about comedy is that um, you can talk about things that, that might be tricky elsewhere. You can talk about sensitive issues and subjects. I mean, do you think that helps people deal with things? I think it's essential. Mm. I think it's absolutely essential. And the comics that I admire most are the ones that make you go, OK, I'm really laughing, but that's actually quite painful, mm. the thing that you just said. Yeah. Uh, and particularly, I mean, I love people who can turn around political material really, mm. really quickly. Mm. That's, that's immensely rare, I have to say. Male or female, uh, that's an incredible skill. And female political comedians are very, very rare. So I want to ask both of you, there was um, a, a poll published recently um, which said that the, uh, the top ten witty individuals in Britain uh, are all men and that uh, more than half uh, of the people who were asked um, didn't think women were funny. What, what do you think about that? Oh, so number 12 was women. Baroness Thatcher. <laughs> yes. Okay, as the world's wittiest Hilarious. woman. Hilarious. Oh, what a thigh slapper. So funny. Yeah. But, but why do you think women have that image? Because, I mean, you're obviously both sat there and you're both living proof that, that women are funny. It's a, I think for a lot of men think that it's a masculine trait. I mean, if you go to a comedy club, to be honest, most of the audience is male. I mean, they'll never be. It's very rare that, that there's a higher proportion of women in the audience to men. I mean, if you come to the comedy store at midnight on a Saturday night, it's mainly um, male 
drunk people. Would you advise women to come into the business or? No, I've been telling her for years not to bother. <sighs> Honest, it, it, it's just a Have I not been? I've at home, I've begged you. She's been stalking me. I said, knocking science down my is door, the way forward. Saying, I agree with your dad, he's <laughs> right. Yeah. No, uh, it's um, it's difficult, you know. It's a, it's a hard lifestyle, especially if you're if you've got kids. Mm -hmm. If you're a woman and you've got kids, it's difficult, you know. Because if I gig every night of the week, I have to drive up and down the motorway. I was in Sheffield last night. I'm in Liverpool tomorrow night, for not much money, really. I mean, the circuit doesn't pay much money. Um, you have to do other things like writing and TV and stuff like that. I mean, it is a hard life. Well, ladies, you've been a pleasure to talk to and incredibly funny. Thank you both very much indeed. And that sadly is it for this week. If you've got any comments, do please email us at everywoman at aljazeera.net. Until next time, bye-bye. <laughs>